Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. Uh, we uh, go from now until uh, let's see here, uh, midnight Eastern time. But right now, let's talk to an old friend. Guess who's here, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, kids! It's, it's Mr. Fun. It's Mr. Fun, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hey, Alex. Hey, nothing but fun, Bubs. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's always fun. It's your two you year know. positive feelings. Everything's <laughs> great. Yeah, because you know how positive life can be, and yes. uh, you're a, you're a, you're a positive person. Yeah, not a little not a little positivity not. here last week. Um, yeah. Uh, Louis C.K. did a gig out uh, out here. And I, I was worried. I wanted to go see him. I was working, and uh, that caused quite a stir. What, why did it cause quite a stir? Oh, they had uh, protesters, and uh, people say they're never going to go to the San Jose Improv again. And uh, of course, it was the, the biggest rain in years that night. So the protest turned out to be six people out in front with a bullhorn. <laughs> It shows you that shows you commitment. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he he sold out. He had to do an extra show. He did a Wednesday, Thursday, and he sold did three shows. Sold them out like in three minutes. You know something? I got to tell you something. Uh, of all the 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 Me Too shit going on, uh, this this thing with Louis C.K. bothers me. And it bothers me because if you were to ask any of those people protesting, even if there were a hundred of them, what is it exactly that he did? They can't remember. Or they have a uh, fall. One of the women that I saw on the news, she says, we can't support comedy that's uh, connected with sexual assault. And I don't think what he did was a sexual assault. No, it wasn't. In fact, it was... Here, here's exactly what happened. According to these women, they were in a room with him, okay, and they all knew him, all right? And uh, we all knew Louie on some level. Uh, you probably knew him too, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, he just, he was, he, he, Sarah Silverman said this was one of the things he liked to do. It was kind of like almost you expected it out of Louie. He would say, do you mind if I pull my penis out and show it to you? And I think, uh, I think Silverman said, sure, go ahead. And then she laughed a lot. <laughs> you know, I mean, she didn't take it as an assault. All mm -hmm. right. So now these women say that uh, Louis C.K. asked if he could pull his penis out and then he pulled it out. Yeah. Did any of you say no? Did any of you say, oh, no, I, or did any of you leave the room when he did it? No. No? Well, then I'm sorry, that doesn't count as assault on any level. Maybe it's not what you do in, pol in uh, polite company, but, you know, I mean, I think he's really gotten a bad uh, uh, go on this deal. And you know something? I, you said he sold out? Yeah. I bet he sells out everywhere he goes because of his notoriety now. I would think so. I just uh, I was curious as to why he picked uh, San Jose Improv. Well, uh, maybe because... Probably wanted to get away from the East Coast. But. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, also, I mean, uh, the thing that's hurting him, though, is he had a lot of TV projects going and movie projects. Yeah, he lost all those. He, he lost all he, those. He said his but, life's been ruined in the paper. He also said that uh, the only thing they could do now is take away my birthday. <laughs> They've ruined my life. Y yeah. Um, but he, um, I, just, I just think that this, you know, he got, he was like, 
I guess maybe number three or four when they were going around busting people like crazy, like they did Weinstein, and then they did uh, uh, what's his name, um, the guy from House of Cards, um, Spacey. Spacey, and I think he was number three. And he, you know, when you compare it to, I mean, this is this is what I hate about the whole Me Too movement, is it one size fits all. You know, I mean, is the crime that he's accused of as bad as uh, the crime that Weinstein is accused of? Not even close. No. Not even close. And is it is it in the same league as the things that people have said about Spacey? Not even close. You know, but they've got him in the same category with these guys and Bill Cosby. And and it is grossly unfair. You know, and yeah, and it's just uh, just the uh, so he's, I don't know if he how he comes back from this. Does that worry you as a comedian? I mean, is this a whole political correctness just starting to get a little out of hand? Oh, I, I think the things we did on your show twenty years ago, we would be <laughs> we'd be arrested today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We couldn't say ninety percent of the stuff we said oh, in nineteen ninety seven. Hey, you, you, you know? it, now uh, let me uh, for people who don't know Larry. Okay, and don't know of his past. He was on my show, and he did traffic. And one of his big catchphrases with traffic uh, was when there was a stall on a highway, you would say... Park it, whore. <laughs> Became a huge cat. I remember I sold T-shirts that said, park it, whore. Yeah, park it. I still ha I have one here, I think. <laughs> It's a collectible. Park it, park yeah, it hoard today t you would be no way in hell you could do that today. Oh, you'd be considered. Uh, oh, that's that's not right. That's not right to say to a woman. No, uh, uh, mm -mm. you know. And I mean, uh, so, uh, and you know something? Maybe somebody could go back and lay that on you and say, "Remember when you used to say park it hoard all the time? What was that about? You know?" Well, I think yeah. If I if. Of course, it won't happen, but say something happened and I got in a sitcom or something or got some notoriety, that would come out and I'd be ruined. Yeah. Yeah. We so, can't, oh, we got to fire you. You did this in 97. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, and and I think that there's a, a we can't, we can't do this. You know, it's just not right. Um, it's very similar, I would think, to the, McCarth the McCarthyism. Uh, easily, easily. Blacklisting. Uh, well, that's what I've said. It, it, you know what it is? Here's the problem with it. Here's what bothers me. It's accusation, and then it ruins one's career. It's the accusation not, is considered a conviction. Yes. The minute they accuse, you're convicted. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, I... I, uh, and I, this is this is going to make some people mad. There's this whole R. Kelly thing going on. Are you familiar with this? Yeah, yeah. Now, I watched the documentaries, and I said to myself as I watched it, what a fucking sleaze bag!" You know, this is horrible what he did to these women. Mm -hmm. It was disgusting, and it was vile. Boom, boom, period. But because they did a documentary on TV saying these things went on doesn't mean that he should lose his contract with Sony Records because these are just accusations by people and a documentary that was made to be somewhat sensational and to get ratings and there you know while I believe every minute of that documentary I don't think he should lose one scintilla of work out of it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, yeah. because now he, they say, well, he, you know, he did go to trial. Yeah, but he was found not guilty. Now, whether you agree with that verdict or not is not in question here. Uh, what you should be arguing about is uh, whether he should be uh, told by Sony, we don't want you to be on our label anymore. And so, I, I, you know, while I think he's a sleaze and he probably did everything they said he did, let's convict him of something, you know. Let's let him have a day in court. 
he mm-hmm. did have a day in court for some film that he video that he shot of him peeing in a, 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 a on a uh, on a teenage girl and uh, what they were actually busting him for was the porn they weren't busting him for pe- peeing on a teenage girl <laughs> and uh he was found not guilty uh and so he never went to prison okay well that was a court case come up with some more you know and now he says he has these women you know uh you know, kind of in prison that he's a Sven Gali and blah blah blah. Well, you know, he's a pimp. All right? You know, and and yeah. and I don't I don't sanction anything that he does and I believe every inch of the documentaries, but I'm not going to say he shouldn't work because of the documentary. And that's what happens with the with all of this is that it's now impl- by implication uh, and and I you know I uh, that that's what they used to say. Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I refuse to testify on the grounds that uh, that uh, you don't have the right to ask me that question. You're done. <laughs> Goodbye. That's your career. <laughs> and then the next day, their movie studio drops them, or their radio station, in the case that I saw personally, drops you. Uh, and you weren't found guilty of anything. You were simply asked a question. Yeah. You refused to answer because you had the right to do that. And so now you have people making accusations. Now the biggest, uh, can I say this? I will. I don't care. Cunt in America is Kirsten Gillibrand. She's our senator from New York. She's running for, for president of the United States. Mm-hmm. She's the one that went and threw Al Franken to the wolves. And Al Franken finally just said, well, forget it, I quit. You know, I, I'm not going to put up with this. I, I can't represent my constituency with this kind of thing going on. And he just, just quit. But she, she's the one that kind of forced him out of office, forced him into that position to quit. And... You know, he was like one of the most liberal uh, uh, Democrats in the in the Senate, and she was like it was like eating your own for lunch, and and I will never forgive her for doing that, never forgive her for doing that, and uh, I would not uh, not vote for her if she ran for dog catcher. All right. Yeah, and I think the thing Franken did, I think it was it wasn't just a kind of a joke anyway that everyone was in on it. It was a gag photo. The woman who did it knew what was going on. I think the reason why Franken decided to quit his post as senator is he just went, I don't need this shit. Yeah. I think that was his general feeling about it. You know, I've got other things I can do with my life. I don't need this shit. You know? And um, I will never forget that Kirsten Gillibrand did that. And how dare she even run for president of the United States, the cunt. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Wait, let's stop her and now. And by, by the way, by the way, you might be upset with me using the word cunt, but actually it was too nice a term for me to use because years, a couple of years ago, uh, I asked, uh, uh, what's his name, the guy who did... Uh, 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 we are the world. Uh, 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 oh. uh, see, that's what happens with me and my in my brain. Anyway, he, uh, I, he, British, and I asked him. I said, "How come you guys all call each other cunts? Because in England they use that term." Yeah. All right. Hey, Bob's a real cunt. You know. Hey, you cunts, come over here. And so. He said, "Well, we think of it as a term of, uh, and I could do this on serious because we could say the word." He said, "We take it as the term of of, of endearment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a terrible term." And uh, so I have a promo where he says, uh, "Alex Bennett, this is so and so, and I want to say you're a real cunt." <laughs> uh, and so by calling her a cunt, I'm probably saying a nice thing about her rather than a nasty thing about her. So let me just call her a two-faced bitch, <laughs> all right, and leave it at that. Um, how dare she, you know? And she did it because she knew she was going to be running for president, and this would make her look good in the eyes of some people. Now, you got a, you got a woman running for president out there uh, in California, Kamala yeah, Harris. Harris. Yeah, 
What do you know about her? Because she looks good to me. She's good looking. I heard she's not that bright. And uh, she, uh, I think she may have moved her way up the ladder by uh, getting friendly with Willie Brown. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you saying, let's be very honest about this, that she fucked Willie Brown? Is that the rumor? That's all the jokes I've heard, yeah. Uh-huh. God, I think I would be down on anybody who fucked Willie Brown. <laughs> yeah. But really, she had an affair with Willie Brown, it's rumored? That's, that's, the, that's the word, yeah. Yeah. Well, she is very attractive, but I watched yeah, her on TV, hot, and yeah. I said of all these women that are are, are up and running, Kirsten Gillibrand, um, Pocahontas, what's her name, uh, <laughs> and uh, and Kamala Harris, I said of the three, I would probably put my money on Kamala Harris and for a couple of reasons. Number, number one, nobody around the country really knows who she is, so they're going to discover her which mm -hmm. is much better than having an opinion going in, okay? And uh, she is attractive. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm talking about all the electability factors here. And she seems to be very politically in the right place, you know, when it comes to the left. So I, I so far, of all the people, but you, what, what's, the, what's the opinion of her in your home turf? Because that's where she's from. She's, I mean, this is, I think, her first or second year in the Senate. There's not a lot of, she, I don't really hear a lot about her out here. I know she's well-liked in San Francisco, but that's certainly not the rest of the country. So I don't know how she'd play to Ohio. I'd like to say that after two years in the Senate to run for president is a bit, uh, oh, what's Too the word? Soon. Too soon, but look at, uh, look at Obama. He didn't stop Obama. It yeah. was, he was he was in for two years when he announced his presidency. Or uh, Trump, who was in for no years. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the Trump. Wow, what a! Uh, uh, too bad you aren't into political comedy because you'd just be you'd have a whole uh, one man show based on. Well, I uh, think Trump is actually. I think he saved a many career. Didn't he? I thought Colbert was on the verge of being canceled till they went to all. Trump all the time. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still can't watch Colbert. I no, I can't either. I mean, it, 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 I can't watch Fallon either. I mean, uh, those are just train wrecks. Both of those shows. I like Kimmel. Kimmel's yeah. been on for fifteen years now. Yep, been on for a long time, and I think he's very good. Uh, in the true tradition of those late night shows, Jimmy Fallon just makes everybody play board games with him on the show. Mm -hmm. And and Colbert, I don't know. There's just something that's not not funny about him. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the thing he did on Comedy Central was a hit, but he was playing a character. And the character is probably much more interesting than Colbert. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't know. Um, but it, we were talking about political correctness. And it, it, have you had to change anything in your act because of this political correctness? Or do you just uh, not I think care? we've all had to tone everything down a little, yeah. Uh, what, so what if, for instance, can you name something in particular that you exercised from your act exorcised well, there, from your act there's one joke i still do only because people tell me i shouldn't do it but it still gets a, it gets one of my biggest laughs is uh my favorite part of sex is slamming the trunk and pushing the car in the lake <laughs> which, which is a little dark but uh <laughs> yeah but now the question is uh is that are you being what is, what is that exactly? Is that a problem? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a funny it's a funny line, you know. Yes, it's a little dark, but uh... yeah, no, it is very dark, but it's good dark, um, and and you know. But that's it, that's why I hate this political. It's just like. I'm not really a serial killer, okay? This is a joke. I mean, the, the fact that anyone would take it seriously is beyond me. But Yeah. 
Yeah, until they start having the protests outside your theater, in which case you'll probably have a big act. Yeah, uh, but- <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're, they're saying that, you know, um, um, Louis C.K., I mean, he's selling out his venues. There's no question about that. He just canceled. Oh, they said he sold that out so quickly. It was unbelievable. It's just FX uh, canceled all his shows. You know, he had about three shows on FX. He had uh, uh, Better Things, and he had his show, and then there was one other uh, with, I uh, can't remember his name, but uh, uh, he played a, a rodeo clown. Uh, and uh, he was he was the producer of each of those shows, and they just completely got rid of him. They kept the shows, but they got rid of him as a producer. Right. And all on insinuation, even though he did admit that he did those things, which now, in retrospect, I would love, if I had Louis C.K. in this room right now, I would say, do you have any regrets about saying you're sorry that you did it or apologizing for it or saying, yes, I did. Because there's really no value in admitting it. You know, usually we used to think of admission as being the first step towards a mea culpa, you know, that you're, you're, and everybody goes, oh, okay, since you apologize and since you say you did it, now you can get on with your life. But this isn't the case. Today, yeah, if, nowadays they they force they force the uh, apology and then they don't accept it. Exactly. Well, in back he was like in the early group. Okay, so he apologized. All right, thinking, hey, I'll apologize and everybody will go. Okay, he sees the error of his ways and now get on with your life. But that isn't what happened, and it's terrible. It's just terrible, uh, and 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 so. If you want other people to say, I'm sorry, or I see the error of my ways, and I'll never do that again, you're not going to get that anymore. What you're going to get is these are unsubstantiated rumors or, um, you know, nobody's telling the truth here or any one of a number of, of, of ways of putting it. And um, uh, I, I think that um, uh, uh, that's that's a dangerous precedent, too. We should... Uh, give forgiveness to people who apologize, and you know. No. Yeah, and we should also have uh, total freedom of speech. Yeah, and 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 again, where he was concerned, none of these women left the room. You know. Yeah, unless he was holding them in the room against their will. Uh, you know. Well, he asked permission. Yeah. You know, he said. Dig- I mean, Huh? What he was doing was an odd thing. I would maybe get therapy for that, but uh. yeah, yeah. So um, uh, hey, look, uh, he, yes, certainly the behavior. He was known for that behavior, as I say. Um, Sarah Silverman said, who was a good friend of Louis C.K.'s, that he did it any number of times to her, and mm-hmm. it became kind of a joke. Well, <laughs> apparently some people, when all of a sudden it was, it was Me Too time, all these people went, oh, that, you know what happened to me? Oh, I can say Me Too as well. Oh, hey, Louis C.K. pulled his penis out in front of me. And there were two other women in the room with us, and, he, you know, and then he asked if he could pull it out, and then he pulled it out. Well, did you say no? You know, did you leave the room? Did you act upon it in some way? that would make you not have to put up with it? No. <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, and it's horrible, and it's, uh, I feel sorry for Louis C.K., okay? Well, where do, you, where do you think he'll be a year from now? I don't know. Every time he says something that doesn't set right with people, because recently he said something about the, uh, you know, the school, the, the school <laughs> shootings. Uh, and I don't know the context of it, and I didn't hear it in the club, and everybody laughed, supposedly. So with it, within context, you know, when you have somebody else saying what he said, it's not going to be funny. But when he says it and he's put it in the context of something else, then maybe it, it balances out. But they're looking for everything they can to nail him on something. And I, I think it's, uh, I really, I feel sorry for Louis C.K., okay? I'm sorry, folks. Go start picketing the show. <laughs> you know, all two of you who listen to it. Because I'm a podcast and nobody listens to podcasts. 
Oh, they listen to podcasts, but, you know, only, uh, you know, anybody who tells you they've got 10 million people listening to their podcast is lying to you. Okay? All right. Hey, bubs, guess what? This, this flew by. Life's too short. It is. And we've spent some of it talking to each other. <laughs> I don't know what the significance of that is. <laughs> Maybe it's too long, life. <laughs> Hopefully we'll talk to you next week, Bubs. Okay, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hi, everybody. Let me see here. I just I got to check something here. A few things. Uh, things go wrong. Things go right. Uh, we can't, uh, we can't make sense of them. Well, wait a minute. Why isn't that? There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. There's certain information I need over here in the, the uh, equipment category or in the software category that I wasn't getting. So now I'm getting it. And now I will uh, go to the Skype lines. And let's make sure they have a tendency to work tonight. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have two people who were on uh, the last show, which was Damien's show, and they're listed there. I'm going to get rid of them so that we have a nice clean slate to work with. Hello, everybody. How are you? My name is Alex Bennett, and uh, I'm here to complain about everything that has to do with uh, uh, getting older. <laughs> I mean, I'm not taken to it too well. Not taken to it too well. Uh I just, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm just going, ah, well, I have a great fear of death, but, you know, compared to life, maybe it's a blessed relief. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Art, uh, you have a chance to call me and talk to me. I'm very tired tonight. L let me, uh, I'll explain why as soon as I get somebody to talk to here. Because um, I hate starting to talk about something and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, people uh, uh, call, and uh, I, I have to kind of interrupt what I'm saying in order to answer the phone for them. So I'll wait till we get ahead of steam here, and then I'll tell you what, why I'm so tired. It's it's basically obviously because I didn't get much sleep last night, and uh, the story of why I didn't get any sleep last night is uh, kind of fun, actually. Um, you know, so. Anyway, our, uh, if you want to call us, by the way, you go over to gabnet.net, and there's a whole tutorial over on the right. Why am I telling you this? Nobody does it anyway. Uh, on the right-hand side of the page, uh, gabnet.net, and it'll tell you exactly how you can be part of this program. Hello there to Phil Meyer, always usually the first guy calling on the program. How are you doing, That's Phil? I actually listen. <laughs> you, you, you actually listen, right. And here we are. Here we go. We're uh, ready to just kick some ass right yeah and take names yeah. uh, bag them and tag them so, hey uh you said you were tired yeah so i wasn't going to let you sit there and uh and 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 beg for callers you know i, I just no, I, don't have to, I don't have to beg for callers we get callers plead <laughs> no i don't plead for them it's just tonight i'm really tired i'll tell you why okay here's the deal remember the story yesterday about going to the dentist and just the horrible experience that I had. Sure. And, yeah. and I came back and uh, the uh, the filling she put in the tooth was rough. And then she told me, well, you know, in 24 to 48 hours, if it doesn't go bad, then you're out of the woods. And I'm going, you know, why are you telling me this stuff? To begin with, you know me. I get terrorized by that sort of thing. Did right? you rub your tongue on the rough filling until it bled? No, but I rub rub my tongue on the uh, filling, rough filling, because you will always do that. People do that. This is right. normal procedure, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, standard procedure. So uh, uh, I I had this filling. What happened was is I had a uh, filling that had been there for about seven, eight years, and all of a sudden uh, it felt very loose in my mouth, and I looked and it was wobbling around and apparently it was falling out. And I went to her and she said, well, I don't know. It kind of looks solid. And then she wiggled it a little more. She said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's loose. And she says, but this is a very small tooth and uh, you've got, uh, you're very close to the nerve. And uh, so uh, I, rather than put in the white filling, you know, that they do, I'm, I'm just going to give you a regular filling, right? 
So she yeah, gives me the regular filling, and I'm I leave the I leave the uh, the dental office, and I'm I, even at the train station terribly depressed over how the whole thing went down with the dentist. Is that filling visible? Huh? Was it visible at all? Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, it would be visible. But I mean, you couldn't see it unless I went. Uh, see, see. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. not visible. <laughs> you know. That's not visible. But. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the train station and I'm going, this is, this is rough. And she says, come back on Saturday, on, on Thursday and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll burnish it. I don't want to do it right now because I might ruin the filling. And I'm, I don't none know of, whether that's correct. None or not. of this is making any kind of, well, anyway, I get home I'm doing the show last night here. You know, I went out a couple of times cause there's something yeah. felt wrong in my mouth. All right. Yeah. So now it's time for me to go to sleep. I put my head down on the pillow, and I feel this thing moving around in my mouth, in my you know between those that tooth. And I go and I, I look in the mirror, and sure enough, the filling is falling out. It's getting loose. Right yeah. now, this is at two o'clock in the morning. You know, I can't <laughs> suddenly go to the dentist. Uh, she said to me, she says, if you have any problems tomorrow, just call my partner, the other dentist. And she introduced me to him and he looked like a nice guy and, uh, he'll help you if you, if suddenly you, you have this toothache that I'm predicting is a 50% chance will happen. So I can't go to sleep. So I got to take a Xanax to put me to sleep. And then I got to get up at nine o'clock in the morning. So I've got like six hours sleep, sleep, which I don't work well on. And I'm, that's why I'm tired now. And I go down to see this guy, and he looks at it, and he goes, yeah, it's falling out. I said, well, she just put it in. You know, what kind of filling? She said, well, might have some, had some saliva in there. She didn't dry it out enough. You know, there's a whole litany of things. He said, "You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to replace this with white with a white filling, you know, porcelain or whatever it is. I don't know what yeah. the, what the composite. Uh, yeah. And she was telling me she couldn't do that. But somehow he felt he could. He said, "Now, you got a choice. I can give you a, a root canal right now and you'll be over and done with it, you know." He said, "But if I put a filling in here, it may only be good for a couple of years." Maybe five, you know. Well, that's that's pretty good odds. And, right? and I'm going, you know, at my age, who knows, you know. I mean, yeah. as I'm lying in my grave, it falls out of my mouth. Okay, you know, doesn't matter to me. So I said, well, let's, since I've already, and he was going to, I didn't know whether he was going to charge me for this or not. Yeah. Uh, but I said, let's just, let's just do the filling thing. So he went through the whole thing and I mean, I got to tell you, number one, he was terrific. Just, you know, how some dentists are terrific and other dentists <laughs> yeah. are, yeah. He was, you know, he says, if anything hurts, just raise your hand. You know, I said, you got a lot of stuff in your mouth, so just raise your hand and I'll uh, back off until we, you know. And he, a little more. he yeah. gave me a shot of Novocaine that was the easiest shot of Novocaine I've ever gotten. You know, a little pinch and then... Yeah. Nothing. It was fine. You must be going to my dentist. Yeah, I mean, he was really, really good, and he yeah. did the thing, and he filled it, and did the thing, and he said, "Now look," he says. I said, "Well, what about this twenty-four to forty-eight hour period where the tooth might go bad because it's too near the nerve?" He says, "Oh no, don't worry about that." He says, "That's not going to happen." He said, "In a few years, it may get worse underneath, and then you know, then you've got a major toothache, and then you got to do the root canal and so on." He said, right. "But we keep taking X-rays every year, and we'll check it to make sure it's not getting any worse." Okay, yeah. so he let me feel that I wasn't going to feel great pain from this tooth. Now I don't know if I will or I won't, but and then I said, "How much? Uh, what are we going to do about the charge here?" He said, "Oh, no charge." He said, "You know." I was correcting something that went wrong, and, and I'm part of this office. And I said, can I ask you a question? He said, what? I said, would there be any bad blood if I suddenly made you my dentist instead <laughs> of her? And he said, no, we're all the same, uh, you know, we're all the same office, you know, and, uh, you know, you can go to either one of us. 
And I said, I much prefer you. I said, because quite frankly, this was shoddy work she did. And he didn't say a word like, oh, no, you know, yeah. he he knew it was shoddy work. Yeah. But I mean, it this this problem. I came home yesterday from that thing. And I was so depressed. I didn't talk to girlfriend. She's mad at me today because I didn't talk to her last night. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. I was just so off put by this whole situation. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, uh, I don't need that. You know, and I just, it was just one thing after another. And then when at two, two o'clock in the morning, I put my head on the pillow and I can feel this thing moving back and forth in my, between my gums, between my teeth, I'm going, I just hope it doesn't fall out before morning, you know, and it didn't. Yeah. But well, I wonder, it was I wonder why she gave you the bum's rush. And that's basically what you got. Uh, I yeah. think so. I think, well, I, I think I got a, it, 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 let me put it this way. He had a whole different way of handling it. No, we're going to yeah. put the white stuff in there. Uh, we're, we're, you know, the, it, the acrylic or whatever will hold better Composite, than a, than yeah. a, than a, than a, a, a traditional filling. And uh, but no, she felt oh she couldn't she couldn't get it to fit again because there wasn't enough tooth. Well, this guy's younger. He's Ukrainian. Uh, yeah. He's uh, um, uh, and I think he was able to do it because that that's what he does well he could get in there and make the notch that's needed to make this thing work stay yeah yeah so you know a good deal of that tooth is now filling but he did it and he did a very nice job of it and then uh, you know uh, the fact that he didn't charge me an extra charge for it just made me say this is my guy you know well there's a bright side to every oh this uh, is the bright encounter. side this is the bright yeah. side I mean, yeah. I always had a certain terror of going to her because I never felt comfortable with her. You was know, she hot? No, she's like, oh, you know, seventy or something like that. I don't know. She's <laughs> not hot. Uh, I mean, she's a nice enough lady, you know, but it, at the bedside manner or the chairside manner, Side if you man. want to call it that, uh, just isn't that wasn't that uh, that, that good. Uh, yeah. and, and it was uh, it was a real um, a real problem. So to it at two o'clock in the morning have this happen, I just went, oh fuck, you know. I mean, yeah. this is just this is unacceptable. Uh, uh, what was the reason for being up and out at nine? The dentist? No, I had to get up at nine so I could call the dentist and make an appointment. He <laughs> saw me at, at one thirty. You know, the one thing about dentists, which is kind of interesting. If you have a dental emergency and you call your dentist, they can fit you right in. Yeah. Now, you, you begin to get the idea, well, I guess he's not very popular. But all dentists leave holes in their yeah. schedule because their yeah. business is more of an emergency business than it is a proactive business. You know, they'd well, like it to all be proactive and nobody to get toothaches, but People get toothaches and they they can't wait on a tooth. Uh, we have an appointment in two weeks for you. No, well, that you know, uh, uh, my dentist that I have now mm -hmm. originally was a friend and not my dentist. And now and, since he's uh, a dentist, he's an enemy? Well, no. <laughs> it, 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 what happened was uh, yeah. I, I broke a tooth, right? It, so the tooth cracked. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on a Sunday, he had me come uh -oh. into his office and had another dentist that he was hanging out with that assisted him, and they took the x-rays and, and fixed me up. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and I said, well, you're my dentist now. <laughs> and I go to Alameda. Uh, yeah, to, to well, see I him. mean, this guy, this guy was so good today and just yeah. so, so caring and so amiable, uh, you know, so charming, yeah. that I just said, he's my dentist. You know, uh, this guy... Uh, he probably can do wrong, but he can't fuck me up like she did. Yeah. You know, is he a Trump supporter? Uh, I doubt it. He's from Ukraine. You know, he may be. No, I doubt <laughs> it. I doubt it. What's Trump ever done for the Ukraine? Uh, uh, he he told Putin that they shouldn't go in and invade. Oh, okay. That was very nice of him. He said, yeah. "Don't do that." Yeah. No, I I don't even think this guy's a citizen yet. He said, "Really? Uh, yeah." He said, "I got." He said, "Why'd you come here?" He says, "I got a green card. I applied for a green card, and they gave me one. And you don't turn that down." Yeah. He said, "So he came over here, 
and he's been here for 20 years, something like that. And wow. he he, uh, he had to go in order to be able to practice dentistry in New York. He had to go back to school for two years. Yeah. So would he be considered a dreamer? No, no, he, <laughs> no. But he had to go to school for two years here to yeah. get qualify yeah. to be a dentist in in New York State. But now that he is, he has his own office. He's doing very well. And uh, uh, I, you know, I got to tell you something. Hi, Charlene. How are you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Good doubts. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing that I, and uh, you know, I'm an old old guy, so I can say this. But he's a younger dentist, and I think that says something. You know, he's old enough. He's done it. He's in his forties, so he's done it long enough that that he's got the experience. But he's young enough that he still knows all the modern, current techniques. Well, you see, uh, you know. older dentists had, you know, unless they really do a lot of continuing education and they're not just, uh, you know, going for a walk in a park, yeah. uh, what uh, the younger dentists do a lot of continuing education. My friend is the 3M sales rep for uh, dental universities for uh, the Western region of the United States. Yeah. And, and the amount of um, information, training, and, and so forth that is not only given in the dental schools, but he before he was that, uh, he used to have to put on these seminars for dentists, uh, and the the amount of education that they go through, and the how they have to dry the tooth, and uh, how many seconds they have to put the little light on uh, right. there, and well, all you know, of you those know, things I, I asked you have what, to learn. I asked him what the light was for because she didn't use the light yesterday, obviously. Well, you didn't need the it, light no, unless you're no. using a composite. If you use a composite, what it does is it says it goes in a liquid and then this hardens it. It dries right. it and hardens exactly. it. Right, exactly. But she's using, yeah. she's using silver and the silver Amalgam. is... Amalgam. Yeah, yeah it's, an older, it's an older method. It's cheaper, mm. too. It has mercury yeah. or something, too. Right? Uh, some, uh, I don't know about that, but... Uh, you know, uh, so the you know the the methods are different, yeah. and it's just the amount of continuing education. And, and I asked him. I said, if I get a if I get a uh, uh, what do you call it a um, a, root, a root canal before she used to send me out to people for the root canal. He says, well, I do them. Yeah. Uh, he says that's part of what I do, and uh, he said I only charge eleven hundred dollars. Well, which I it, you know it, it sounds it, like uh, he has more training. You know, it, uh, because it, his more, repertoire is larger. More, more, well, yes, he also does implants. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, wow. he's a full-service dentist, he said, but he's not a specialist, and that's what makes him different than a lot of other people. That he, you In know, general dentistry, but I, uh, I, how much does he charge for an implant? I didn't ask, you know, <laughs> you know. Alex? Yeah. I have a dental nightmare story. You want to oh, hear boy. it? Sure, why don't we hear a dental nightmare story? Let's see, right. is he going to be know, on I'll, the... I'll condense it, and I won't make it a big, long epic. But, you know, I, I get a lot of stuff happening to my teeth, too. <laughs> yeah. I heard you last night, and then when you talked about it now, I said, oh, my God, I have to call in. I, I, I go to, you know, like, a dental school in the hospital, mm -hmm. and they always stress that these people are like, you know, they, they've got a degree in dentistry because they went to Rutgers University and all this. Right. But what they're up there in the hospital to do is probably to take patients so they can learn how to work on all different kind of things because they're right out of like testing and dental school, you know? Yeah. So that means that, that what they're up there for is to learn how to be better when they get to practice, right? Yeah. So I've had good luck for years up there. I, 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 had, a, I, had, a friend, I had a friend who went to a dental school uh, to get mm -hmm. his dentistry done, and it was, it was fine. You know, it's, it's a long supposed time, to be better huh? because like you, it gets checked a lot by right. Really so good it takes dentists. longer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so anyway, I've usually had good experience and everything, but like in the last year, I don't know what happened there, but I went up and I hate to say this, like you know, I'm not a big huge uh, like a uh, thumping feminist. I mean, you know, I I am a feminist though, but not. But I mean, to me, it seemed like when I got women, I had a lot of trouble. So I had these two women one time that, well, the one girl, she was very like a uh, rushing, she was definitely a New Jersey girl, young, you know, she was real fast and rushing and something was making me nervous about her. But usually, you know, I'm okay because I had no bad experience. Well, she ended up, Alex, 
dropping the whole drill into my mouth no. while it was going. Oh, geez, oh my. Maybe you were talking too much. Wait a minute. While it was going? I think, no, I think it was, Phil. I think yeah. it was. Wait a minute. So while, anyway, while it you was... don't do that to somebody, though. But I swear I was bleeding no, wait, and everything. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me hold on a second, Charlene. When you say the drill, do you mean the drill bit or the whole drill fell in? Like the mouth? whole drill while it's going. <laughs> she didn't, it wasn't. Oh, it was on. did it rip up the roof of your mouth? Yes, or? it ripped. You know, like under your tongue, that wow. piece that's like stuck. It was put like bleeding, and I mean, I'm really good because most people would be screaming. I don't know how I wasn't, but. I, you know, I was. I, you well, know, when you go strong. to a, when you go to a dental she, school, and get this, she says to me, "Oh my God, <laughs> it's really bleeding. Do you want me to put some stitches in it?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, put the stitches in it." You know, she had to suture it up. It was really bad. Can wow. you believe that? Uh, no. So I now, said. whenever I go to the dentist, I have to explain to them I have like this fear. Yeah. When I get in the chair now, that I have to explain to them that just go easy with me. <laughs> Please don't do something because I had a really bad experience in the dentist. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that would be a, a major one. Did you, when you went to a, a, a dental school, did you have to sign a release or something that you wouldn't in, to indemnify them against any like legal? Suing? Yeah, because they're practicing on you. These are not experienced dentists. These are people who are learning to be experienced dentists, and some of them, yeah. some of them are terrific, and they're getting A's. You know. Right, but that doesn't mean that they're very good with patients, you know. You said that this was a Jersey girl. What did she have? A bouffant hairdo? No, or... no, that's the old school eighties girl. Uh, <laughs> Everybody yeah. in Jersey has a bouffant. No, these girls are like Rutgers girls, and they're all blonde, and they play uh, tennis, and they're just, you know, daddy's rich, and oh god, I even hear them talking sometimes. Daddy's a dentist or a surgeon. Yeah. And, you know, they, they know the medical profession. But she was, like, really in a big rush and everything. And, and she did not like me. I think I think it was because I was talking. Like, out here, they want to talk. And if you go in talking, they get mad because they're supposed to be talking. You know? yeah. All I got to do is put a dental dam in your mouth. and what I know. Don't, don't, like, rip the, you know, my tongue out. You know, <laughs> just tell me, please, you know, lady, shut up. Now, or, you know. now I got to ask Patrick a question. Hi, Patrick. Hey. It's been a while. How you doing? I'm alive and, and well. Oh, okay. That's all we uh, want. That's all we care about. I thought your wheelchair was frozen in place and you couldn't get over to the computer. Yeah. yeah. No, but it, it it's pretty fucking cold here. 23 below this morning when I woke up. So. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, so my, my question is, I suppose, where did I, what did I do with my phone? Did I leave it in the other room? I guess I did. Uh, we got, what's the temperature right now here? Oh, it's eight degrees. Um, eight degrees. Yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick, you go to the dentist, right? Yeah. What do they use for a chair with you? Do you have, they have to pick you up and put you in the chair? No, they, uh, one of the chairs they have is low enough that I can transfer. Okay. Uh, chair into into the dental chair so oh okay uh, i'm just wondering about that you know um, yeah and be, when i i had a dentist that i went to for 20 some years yeah. uh from when i was a kid all the way until i got paralyzed and this was the dentist you know, you guys were talking last night i heard uh when i listened to the uh rebroadcast yeah uh the dentist was the dentist. There was no hygienist, no, and that's what this was. This guy was that was Bree's old. guy, I think. And I would, I'd go in there, I'd get a cleaning, do everything, and like twenty minutes later, you're out of there. Well, I got paralyzed, and I couldn't get in a chair. So what he did is he would do all of the cleaning and that while I was sitting in the wheelchair. So mm -hmm. you know, it was. It was it was a different experience, and then he retired, and then I didn't. I've never had a hygienist until then, and all that, and sitting in the chair, and so I felt like I was, you know, a celebrity then. Oh, I remember my original dentist years ago when I was a kid. I was like eighteen when I, I, I didn't have a cavity or anything till I was like eighteen, and then he found a small little one, so it gave him something to do. 
Uh, and uh, he was my my best friend's father, and uh, he um, he was. I don't think he had anybody else in the office but him. You know, he had the walked in the door, and there he was with his chair. Come on in, sit down. You know, yeah. my childhood dentist uh, worked out of his house, and uh, <laughs> I, I had him from the the time I started going to a dentist till I got out of high school, and then it ends up I dated his daughter when I was a senior in high school. Yeah, <laughs> I mean things have changed a great deal in those days. If you got a toothache, well, guess what? They're pulling the tooth. And if they're pulling the tooth, what do you put in place of it? Well, you just get yourself a, you know, a, a denture. A false tooth a false bridge. False tooth, yeah. whatever. Today, uh, root canals, uh, crowns, uh, and the best of all, of course, you get implants instead of uh, losing the tooth. Well, you lose the tooth, but then they hammer a spike in there and they, you know. You know, I found out you know, about... The dentists used to uh, use leeches and uh, <laughs> perform a phlebotomy. Yeah. No, here, I'll tell you, yeah, I've t I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, implants were invented hundreds of years ago by something like the Samoans who would take pieces of wood and pound them into somebody's jaw... And that was then, called torture. And then put a fake tooth on there. Well, yeah, but it, but they kind of invented the implant, yeah. uh, the concept of the implant. But now, of course, it's a it's a speciality, you know. And and the Japanese uh, used to implant bamboo shoots under the uh, uh, prisoners' uh, uh, nails, you know. <laughs> but here's what I'm wondering. I looked. So, I, I, I look, yeah. uh, what, what? Started the Viet Cong. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So uh, no, so I, I was trying to figure it out, you know, um, uh, uh, with the with the uh, implants. I looked around, okay, to see how much implants cost, and there are a lot of people who have dental practices who said implants thirteen hundred dollars. Now I don't know if that includes. Uh, <clears throat> All the other stuff. All the other stuff. It probably doesn't include the crown. That's for damn sure. And it, you know, it probably. Yeah, but nevertheless, they said, and I saw quite a few of them. About thirteen hundred dollars. And I, you think, know that I material think material that hmm? they bake, uh, that they make the implant tooth from. Yeah. Uh, that the the blank they call them uh -huh. costs thirty five bucks. Uh, I, my friend used to work for Ivaclar Vivident, who oh, makes well, those well, machines my, my, and those my, blanks. My ex-girlfriend uh, uh, used to, while she was going to college in order to pay for college, uh, joined... Uh, who is this, by the way? This is just a regular caller on the phone. Who Who, who is this? Hello? Doug and me? Yeah. Who Might is, be Doug. Who is this? Doug. Hey, I was... Oh, okay. Hey, Doug, happy New Year to you. Okay, let, Doug. let me. I guess, took, I, I guess it took me on block, so I appreciate it. L L okay, you yeah. Made my year. Well, don't make me regret. Me. Don't make me regret it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what was I going to say? Oh, you said you had a girlfriend. Oh, that, yeah. She, uh, she put herself th put herself through college. Worked for a company that made crowns, and. Uh, she said that she you know, she delivered the crowns, and she told me about that business. And when you get a crown, to begin with, there there's a fifty percent markup, a hundred percent markup. Excuse me, a hundred percent markup. The dentist puts on the crown. Like if they buy it for five hundred, you pay a thousand. Yeah. You know, and I thought about it. Boy, that what a rip off that is. Totally. Because really what's happening is my dentist is becoming a middleman for selling the crown. It's like he's buying it wholesale and then he's selling it to you retail. Didn't you tell him you weren't Gentile? That but, you get but, it wholesale? But no, but, you know, I mean, to begin with, they make the money because they, they, they make the mold. You know, they do the setting for it and all of that. That should be what they make their money off of. Not the fucking 100% markup on the on the crowns. Well, and they that's, mark it up according what to they where do. you live. What, what, like, by, 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 by geography. So if, if you live in a high-income area, they mark it up even more. Like in Palo Alto, it's twice as much as in Tracy, for instance. 
What do you think the rent is in Palo Alto and, compared to Tracy? Oh, at least triple. Well, that's triple. that's why they no. have to mark no, it up. No, but no, saying, but not, like when when Bree called in the other day, we figured out that that we here, Phil, can fly to uh, where is he? Dubai. 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 Get a crown and come back and save two thousand dollars. What he didn't tell you <laughs> is his dentist is a nomad in the middle of the desert, living uh, in a tent. No, no, his no, de- no, 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 His his dentist was, and can I put this mildly, a piece of ass. And half off. And half off. But, I mean, she <laughs> I'm, really. I'm going to Dubai the next time I need it. I'm going her. to Dubai just to have her work on my mouth. Yeah. A lot like, of people go to Mexico. Put yourself uh, in the yeah. face just to get over there. And uh, they, they do, do other like elective that. surgeries in Thailand. Well, you know, there are places in this world that you can get some of those elective surgeries done. And they are cheaper. And they are good. You know, the, we tend to put a kind of me- look, look. Look at my dentist yesterday. Okay, been around I don't know forty years doing dentistry. Right? Look at how she fucked up my mouth. All right. So uh, how how is it going to be worse if I go to Thailand to get my teeth worked on? <laughs> 17 hour massage flight too. Huh? <laughs> Special massage. You get your you can get a crown and a happy ending. You know, I, I yeah. wonder if they have issues with uh, uh, sepsis and uh, and bacteria and things like that in some well, of these hospitals. All those countries do. Well, although uh, my friend Jimmy lives in Thailand now, <laughs> and uh, he's got uh, some maladies that are very you know significant, and he goes to the local hospital in Karat, which is in the middle of nowhere, and he says, you know, to to get treated, including the pills, it's like twelve dollars. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. He's got some sort of thing where he's got something on his brain and, uh, you know, it could kill him any second, but yeah. he, he, he moved over to Thailand and married a Thai girl and lives in her village. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, Doug, Die any second. It, it, what, yeah. what do you say, Doug? I, I, I put Die I, any second. Yeah. I, I hope you're doing well, you know, have Talk to you in a little while, so everything's okay with you. Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's it's okay. I'm on my way to dying. You know, aren't we all? Yeah, <laughs> you, know. you and me both. You know, anyway. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to decide what to do with the rest of my life. I have a I have a daughter getting married uh, in June, and it's like, oh my god, why do they make it the responsibilities of the brides to have to pay for the damn wedding there? Doug is I mean, father of the god. bride, right? Yeah, yeah, but father, the father uh, of the bride. Well, the father of the groom though pays for the what the honeymoon or something, isn't that the tradition? Uh, for, uh, everything except for like the uh, reception dinner. Jeff, you, you Jeff, Martin you've been there. I thought they had minute, good deals Je- at Waffle House. Jeff, you've been there. What's the tradition on that? I, I, I wish. No, I'm talking to Jeff. I'm talking. I'll even take. I'm, t- I'm talking to Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He can't hear, he can't hear. Jeff. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, it's 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 been such a, a long time since I thought about that. Matter of fact, my daughter's 44 years old today. Yeah, uh, I kind of happy birthday to her. Yeah, I gotta figure out what uh, what happened. This was a long time ago, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure I paid for a lot of it. You know, it's not. It's amazing. That's all, I can all I have to say about old age is it's amazing how time flies when you weren't having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I, t- I tell you what, like you know, when we had high school re- reunions, I, I went. I went to like freshman, sophomore year in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Junior, senior year in Savannah, Georgia, and I was a reunion whore. I went to every high school reunion. The 40 year reunion came up. I had like no interest whatsoever. Even at other people's it, it, schools? <laughs> reunion yeah. pressure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, as I said, I was a reunion whore. I'll be admitted. I was a whore. I, li- I loved going to those things. But when it came to the 40 year reunion, no. I, I didn't no like interest. those people when I was 18. Why would I like them now? <laughs> my 47th is coming up and I'm not uh, going I, I went for a reunion I've told the story that was on a boat 
And yeah. uh, I saw everybody getting on the boat. I didn't make myself known, but I saw everybody getting on the boat, and I went, I'm not doing this. And I got turned around and went home because I didn't want to be stuck on a boat for three hours with what I looked at as being old people. Well, <laughs> I, I've got this thing called classmates.com, yeah. and you can right. look at these people and, and hear their stories. <laughs> and I know I didn't like them then, and I still yeah. don't like them now. Yes, Patrick. Well, yeah, Patrick, Patrick, shut up. Yeah, a, J Doug, I just said Patrick. Sorry. So pay attention, okay? Because you, we don't have a video on you. and you I'm, probably, on the, I'm on the phone. I'm, on, I'm not on Yeah, the and you don't have I'm a video sorry. of them, so you don't, you can't, it's very hard, much Sweet. harder for you to participate, okay? And hello, Patrick. Yes. Uh, anyway, Patrick. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. From my 10-year 10, 10 anniversary, I got, uh, or reunion, I got paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And I was able to miss that one, which was good. Then we had a 15, which I came up with some other excuse. A 20, and I think our 25th was last year. Yeah. And I didn't give a shit. I, I, like Phil said, I didn't like half the people when I was in school. And the <laughs> ones that I do like, I can keep up with on Facebook. Right. And keep them at arm's length. You know, I mean, I don't see anybody, so it it's a big racket, and if I really gave a shit, you know, I'll, I'll meet with somebody in person, just them. I don't need all of those people, but I, I just found the uh, paralysis one as the best excuse on why I couldn't go is, oh, I just got a touch of the paralysis. Yeah, so. right. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, um I went to one uh, that was at a f ranch up in Sonoma. They held it there. And uh, I think that was like the 20th or something like that. The 20th or 30th maybe. And uh, I went to it. And um, it was amazing. It was amazing how some people had aged and other people hadn't at all. You know? Uh, and But I, as, at one point, I, you know, I had my little tag, Bennett Schwarzman. Right, yeah, and uh, I'm going around. I'm, You're talking, shit. I'm talking to somebody, and there we're talking about you know. So, and and you've been living in Marin. Yeah, where do you live? Well, I was in New York, and now I'm living in San Francisco, and uh, blah 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, it was either a he or she pauses, looks at me, and goes, "You're Alex Bennett." <laughs> <laughs> I said, you found me out, you know, I mean, um, but uh, uh, that was the last one I really went to. The other one I tried to go to was the one where everybody was getting on the boats and they were all considerably older and I didn't want to be on that boat, okay, with them, stuck with them. I can't get off of it till the boat pulls back into shore. Uh, at least at a ranch, you can leave whenever you want to. If it's at a hotel, you can leave whenever you want to. I always have hated any kind of event. We used to have radio station promotions where we would rent out a boat and invite our audiences, our, our fans, to ah, that's come no, up. Come, that's no excuse. You can always wait, jump wait a minute, to come on the boat with us. And uh, uh, I hated that because I was stuck on a boat with fans. I mean, there was nowhere to escape, okay? So you had to be nice for three hours. <laughs> you know. so. I guess fans and friends are definitely two completely different things there. Where you, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been drinking. You probably have no friends. You've been, you've been you drinking tonight, Doug? Friends, you sound like you've been yeah. drinking tonight. No, actually I'm not. Oh. Um, just laying back with my two dogs and... Wait Doug has turned a new leaf. Really? Yeah. Photography has been good for him. Uh, I'm, I, yeah, I'm trying to do the best. I can see, you know, as I said, the term starving artist. But, Phil, I do. I definitely appreciate all your in, you know, inputs and uh, not inputs, but, I mean, inputs from my, you know, critiquing my photography and all that. So I definitely appreciate oh, it's that. Pleasure. Taking the time to time taking time doing that and i like that last picture that you posted about with the the church and the bright light oh yeah yeah very very nice picture 
Anyway, I'm Thanks. sure I was boring the shit out of Alex. So, anyway, sorry, Alex. Okay. Anyway, um, um, let me see here. What, what is anything happening in the news again? It's just the same old shit, isn't it? Although now it seems as though Trump thinks he knows more than the CIA, the FBI, and ambassadors <laughs> to foreign more. countries. He's always said so. Yeah, yeah, he sure does, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe he does. <laughs> These guys, you know, get those up. other guys told us that there was uh, WMDs in Iraq. No, no, not those guys. But these guys are saying uh, that uh, the CIA. The Bush guys. No, they're saying that uh, you know, watch out for for uh, uh, North Korea because this guy is still making missiles, and they said yeah. that uh, you He's know. He's not testing. And anything. then they said Iran has not restarted their nuclear um, uh, stuff program programs. Yeah. And uh, what was the one other thing that he brought up? Uh, oh, yeah, and ISIS is still a problem. And these are all the things that we've been told by Trump. Oh, ISIS is no, oh, and the Russians and the Chinese are a problem, too. Yeah. And, and they and, are. And he's always saying good things about Putin. And he's always uh, saying that we, uh, uh, we've got to stop Iran because they're building those nukes again, which they aren't. And uh, I want to make friends with North Korea uh, because he's going to stop making missiles, which he hasn't, you know. He stopped exploding them. How do you know? Yeah, it's launching them. Like, How do you know? It's like, yeah, it like test sites got like blown up. There are underground That's test sites, Phil, that you can test all Yeah, the, but they can tell if there's an underground explosion. Now, the USGS can figure that nah, out. When, you know, nah, it's like the, earthquakes. The, if it's deep enough, it's harder. Yeah. It's much harder, you know. Um, but no, nah, but I mean Trump's an idiot. I mean Trump's just yeah. You know, I, I mean it's sort of like if Obama did anything like this or Clinton did anything like this, you, you know, you'd be calling for impeachment. You mean Trump like oh, like, oh aren't they? Yeah, well, whatever, whatever. Yeah, okay, we'll let it go by. Okay. Well, not gonna, no, we haven't called for impeachment yet, Phil. Didn't you hear that lady in impeach forty forty five impeach forty five? Uh, Barbara Lee, is it, or uh, or is it the so one, one two, that I was one, on the plane two, with? One, one, you know, one or two people have millions of people in the United States. You're going to say, because this one person did it, that means that everybody wants that? That's what, like the ball struck the brush there. You can't do that. Uh, you're going to play syllogistic reasoning with me? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, it, there's plenty uh, of people Patrick, out there that want to impeach I want, I, want, I, want, I want Patrick's point of view on this. I don't want pills. I want Patrick's. <laughs> okay, what do you want specifically? Your opinion. You My, always got a good opinion. In general? No, he's talking about the people wanting to in general, impeach and, Trump. And overall, yeah. The, the, impeach the Democrats. what's going on with with everything, Mr. Patrick. I mean, I... <laughs> Wait, make, I, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Ray Renati just put up a sign saying he's he's not available right now. He's making his wife happy. <laughs> well, that that should take what about. Does that mean? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> is it, that why he put that neck massager on it, it, it on his neck it, uh, for the last it, ten minutes so it, he'd be it, in fighting in form? In Ray's case, I think that'll take about a minute and a half, so he'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick was uh, Pat, uh, Patrick. Um, no, I, I, well, for one, I didn't vote for Trump, um, and two, I'm not as anti-Trump as everybody else is that called this show except Phil, but I'm definitely <laughs> where I sleep with him. So I, you know, I, it depends on what what's happening. I've been very um, cautious with anything that Trump wants to do internationally because I I don't feel that he has the ability to make his own decisions or listen to other people unless it's pounded into his head by his own family. So if I think if the military is explaining something to him, he has to listen to his daughter or his sons Oh, yeah. worse than yeah. that. Worse, or son, or wait, worse than that, Patrick. Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram. Yeah, I, I, I fucked the shit up. Well, 
You really think Laura Ingram's hot? I haven't been late in a couple of years. Give me a break. Oh, okay. All right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, so, yeah, uh, you're, do, you're doing better than me. I'm married. Uh, yeah, Charlene. Anyway. Charlene. You, you know, you guys mentioned Trump, and whatever Patrick said maybe just think of this. I was somewhere today, and uh, I was mentioning that uh, they were calling him Governor Chris Christie on the Colbert show. Mm-hmm. Although he's no longer governor, or does that mean that? No, like, no, no. You Alex, still you still call somebody governor even I'm, after they're life. no longer a governor. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. Same okay. thing. They still call Giuliani mayor. They do, they do it all the time. Yeah, and this, yeah. you do the same thing with uh, with senators or anybody. I mean, you can have a, you can have somebody that was a senator, a congressman for two years, and they're congressman so and so for the rest of their lives. Their life. Yeah. yeah. I was mad because Colbert didn't ask him. How come you had lap band surgery, but you're still about 300 pounds? You know. He, <laughs> well, but, he, uh, the anyway, trouble is, the trouble is, he ate the lap band. That was the problem. Right? So anyway, this woman starts <laughs> saying um, she brought up Trump when I mentioned Christie, and she said, uh, "I listen to all the religious radio shows, and I feel that Trump is the savior of the world." She said, "If the Democrats get into power, we're all going straight to hell." And I said, okay, uh, yeah, sure. Who said, you know? who, who, who said I that? I was like, this one is a loony. <laughs> but, I, you know, I hear that uh, people don't like Trump that much anymore, and they're realizing that he's like a crock. But I guess, obviously, this woman is drinking the Trump Kool-Aid and stuff, too. She really, she was like so gung-ho. Well, I, I said this. Trump, Trump supporters think you guys are treasonous. And, hey, can, you know, you I, want I, porous I, borders. Uh, and uh, we don't, we, nobody, it, 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 don't we, want the rule we, of law. We've never said we want, want to kill wait a We never babies. said, hey, we never hey, said, hey, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold on, Doug, hold on. We didn't say we Sorry. wanted porous borders. We said we wanted strong borders, but we don't We don't think a wall is the answer. Well, you're also not the president, and he is. Well, but he's not, he doesn't have much control anymore. We'll he's see. an idiot. What do you mean, it's, we'll you see? Know, Hey, you could be down a couple of points in the first quarter, and then all of a sudden you figure out what the opposing team is doing, and you come back to he's win the game. He's too egotistical to do nah, that. No, he's going to get knocked out in the 12th round. That's, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, Better, uh, good good syllogism. Uh, hey, can I, can, I, can I point out something real quick that happened at a show I was at, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible, even though I know I'm worried as hell. And I might have brought this up one time, so if I did, please stop me. But I was at this show, and I had this, like, family from West Virginia. And the guy there was, like, talking about, like, all of these conspiracy theories to me. And now, yeah, you know, I'm political and all that, but when I'm at a show like this, I don't talk religion or politics or anything like this. And this guy is, like, telling me, he's like, you wait till after the election, after November the 4th. I was like, yeah, I'm thinking, it's like, uh, the election is November the 6th. And he goes, <laughs> and there's Russia. Gonna be a, and he's like, there's going to be a civil war that's going to break out that's going to be, you know, caused by Antifa. I'm like, Antifa is like a bunch of skinny college kids going after fascists, which I have no I think it's pronounced Antifa. They just arrested the leader of Antifa. Yes. No, but, anyway, but, but anyway, this guy claimed when he was like 13 years old, now he's like 60 plus years old. He claimed when he was like 10 years old, he somehow got in some secret government storage unit and found this big crate that was full of these coins, and he grabbed a handful of these coins, and and that this was something that was been going on for like the last 50 years to get this civil war going on yeah. after the election because they're like bitcoins. And it's like bitcoins is like, you know, you know that's not reality that's there was like no cyber world. anything 60 Come years on. ago yeah, yeah. yeah. patrick yeah, patrick yeah, yeah. wait a minute it, 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 I'm, I'm just sitting there just like nodding my head like yeah okay hold on right. hold yeah, on doug great. hold great. on doug think, doug think, doug doug think, doug, doug. Just, I, doug. Well, shut doug. Up, Bill. hold on stop, doug. Think, hold on oh, no. that's Alex. i'm sorry I didn't, I didn't mean to tell you shut up, Alex. i'm sorry uh, 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 patrick has his hand up but you wouldn't yeah. see that because you're on the phone the, the guy that you were talking to, Doug, was his name Tim by any chance? <laughs> he was from West Virginia, and, and, and the only reason he came to my booth was because I had a picture for this haunted amusement park from West Virginia out of Princeton. 
and they were from Princeton, so they recognized the picture right away. And that's what, you know, brought him to my booth, and this guy started talking to me, and his family was walking around, and I think they still won my pictures from me. He There's didn't only buy a $10 it? $10 pictures. Well, no, I, yeah. if I said, I think if you stole it, I don't think he bought it. So, no, it, it was a picture, it was like, it was there beforehand, now it was gone, because somebody was looking for it, so anyway. But, it sounds yeah, like no a big conspiracy, deal. I mean, it's like, it's like, Excuse me? Sounds like a conspiracy. To steal he your pictures. Conspiracy, <laughs> not me. I, I don't. I, I can care less if somebody sold uh, a ten dollars picture for me. My my life's going to go on. So. Okay. Well. That, Sorry, that, brought the that brought the show. That brought the show. That brought the show to a grinding halt. Uh, I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I apologize. Put me on ban again. So anyway, I, I'll think about it after the no, show. No, don't, 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 don't. Anyway, I'm uh, doing the time on here. Where were we? Uh, um, well, now I'm completely thrown uh, your off. Your flummox, bro. Well, oh, we were talking about well, Trump, about, and we were talking well, about. I, uh, Charlene had brought up a point about uh, tr uh, the um, people not wanting to impeach him. And my counterpoint was, no, I think that most of them want uh, his uh, opposition want to impeach him. No. I, uh, for instance, I've always been against impeachment because I think that the amount of effort that it's going to take will not realize itself before the election. Were you here for the California impeachment of, what is it, Gray Davis? Yeah. How long did that take? Uh, it took uh, about a year. And then Schwarzenegger got uh, uh, elected. Well, yeah, because he got two votes and everybody else only got one. No, Gary yeah. Coleman was the spoiler. He actually ran against, he was also <laughs> running. Uh, you and know, and uh, also a porn actress. Well, I'm trying to remember her name now was running for governor. That one I don't it was a, in that governor's race oh, anybody anybody could run. There were 40 governor. people I think yeah, running. something like that. Yeah, so Schwarzenegger won out of a field of 40 by getting more votes than anybody else. So I say he could have won by and four I can't votes. Believe, I can't remember that porn actress's name. Yeah. Uh uh, uh well then that uh, means you're you are drunk. Anyway, uh Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you are the the only person I know of on the left that is not supportive of recalls or impeachment. And recalls for the reason of, like, like you've explained, if you elected them, you have to deal with them, let them do their job. And as far as the impeachment, it's the time constraints. And I, I agree with you on both Well, also the money it costs. I mean, when they were impeached... Um uh, when they impeached uh, uh, Clinton, it cost this country fifty million dollars to do that, you know. And what did it do? So he got impeached, but he didn't get convicted, you know. Right. And that was never going to happen. So I mean, what what they do is they try to do this to slow the people down. And I just I just feel that like I think Ray Davis was a recall. I don't think he was an impeachment. He was a recall. Uh, yeah, he, I guess he was a recall. Yeah, he was recall. a recall. They took a recall vote, and they recalled him. And they so voted they, him yeah, out. They yeah. voted him out. Uh, but I just feel that uh, the guy got elected. Let's not have buyer's remorse. Let's do whatever we can to slow him down so he can't do much damage. But, you know, impeaching him... Uh, if we started impeaching Trump now, let's say Mueller came out with his report tomorrow and it said he was sucking Putin's dick, okay? Uh, it would still be two years before that thing would ever come to a head. And how long did it take with Clinton? It wasn't like overnight with Clinton. <laughs> it was uh, at least two years, maybe come more. Come to a head after sucking the dick. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, and, and when you think of what Clinton was you know, was was found impeachable for. Uh, it's this, almost this is laughable. that lying I was talking about last <clears throat> night. That you know, you, you tell one thing, and it's really something else. I mean, with Clinton, the outlaw lied, but uh, with these other guys that they're convicting or oh, or and, charging and Trump, now, Trump isn't lying. He lies ten times a day. Uh, that, that that's that's your news. No, you no, know? it's not my Documented news. Documented eight thousand lies in two years. Documented. <laughs> Well, he's consistent. 
Yeah. No, he probably will go down as the most lying president of, of all time. Remember how, who do they call? Who do he call? Lying Ted? Ted Cruz? Yeah. Call him and, lying and Phil, Ted? Phil, 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 let me ask you something. What's the worst lie? Saying that uh, you'll still get your same doctor or uh, the Mexicans are going to pay for the wall. What's the Doesn't matter. Lie? It's all. It's all. It's all bullshit. No, no, no. You're not answering my question. I answer. I ask you. This, I, I think that's uh, you know the ACA. What, 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 I the think the ACA one? was a bigger con than the wall. The ACA uh, you know, cost more you're money. Not, you're not, you're not, you're it not, it, not, it not, took away the rights question. of individuals to decide yeah, whether I, they want to buy insurance or not. I just no. I just love how. And that's not a personal attack against you, Phil, because I like it. Of course it, it is. But it, it, it's, just, it, it's just sort of like, oh, you know, Obama told, you know, that we can keep our same doctor and all that. Oh, How horrible. No, I kept my no, same doctor. You asked me which one was worse. You asked me which one was worse. But the Mexicans are going to pay for the wall. And it's like all of a sudden, like, now I'm going to shut the government down because I don't want $5 billion from the tax, taxpayers. You know, to pay for the wall, and it cost us eleven billion to shut the government down. And what's how much does it cost us to Come deal on. with what's, the what's uh, documented no, that's a, aliens? No, that's, a, that's a simple question. What is worse? Uh, I told you what was worse: the ACA and Obama's uh, uh, con game to, uh, no, to raise insurance no, rates. Was, listen, I, I got to go. My wife just got home, and from she's doing taxis and all. Alex, always a pleasure talking to you, Al and, okay. and Patrick and right. everybody else All online. Right. Y'all have a great okay. night. Y'all take have care. Have a nice evening. Talk to y'all again. Okay, bye bye, Doug. Thank you See for you. calling. Uh, All right, bye bye. Okay, I, th I think he was drunk. No, I don't think he's drinking uh, much. <laughs> much. I really don't. He seems to be. Um, uh, that he's found uh, something that uh, interests him, and I, I think he's you know he's a creative guy, yeah. and uh, I, I don't think he's drinking that much. You know? No, and remember this, Alex. Anybody who calls in, unless they are experienced callers like Tim, all right, yeah, different to to interact when you're on the phone anyway. So yeah, yeah. and he talks I, a lot, you know. Yeah, and that's hard for me to say, but yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get rid of him from the screen here. There we go. Okay. I, you know, the funny thing is with the new Skype, I could hover over the circle and, uh, and then click on the down arrow and uh, actually remove people from calls. I, I don't see the mute as an option, but it says remove from call. And, you know, you, I could actually do it to you. Yeah. And probably take, why. it'd probably remove you if you did it to me. Yeah, maybe because it's yeah. a group call. How about uh, Facebook in their group uh, thing? Isn't it good oh, that you didn't use that? Well, no, uh, because there's, there's a bug. Because you just got the story all wrong. What do you mean? It wasn't Facebook. Oh, uh, it was uh, Apple. Apple. And it was FaceTime. FaceTime. And, FaceTime. And, and FaceTime. it was their, their their group FaceTime. Yeah. 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 There was some way yeah. that people could get in on your call or something. I don't know. Oh, and they could turn on your camera, and they could spy on you. Uh, the only thing Before is... you picked up the call, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I, if they spied on me, it's not interesting. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, spy on me. There's nothing happening here. However, if we could spy on Ray right now, he's making his wife happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did he turn his mic off? <laughs> uh, that, I, I wish he'd left it on. Yeah. And, and is, how, is he actually making his wife happy in the way that we would like to think he was making his wife happy, or is he just saying, yes, dear, you're right? I mean, you know, that could be sweeping the floor, and, and that could be it, yeah. Yeah, he could be taking out the garbage. That would exactly. make his wife happy. It takes very little to make women happy, right, Charlene? Take out the garbage. Right, Everything's right. fine. Do the dishes. Make the bed, right. <laughs> I haven't been working out lately. I have. You have? Well, I cold i haven't done well i just don't throw that in there because i'm the crippled one yeah you know well two days this week i had the dentist okay tuesday tuesday and wednesday i had to go to the dentist monday what was it it was something else that i had to do here you had fallen were you sore or something no that was a week ago 
That was a week oh. ago. I still have the uh, bruises on my knee, though, though it's almost healed. And uh, also I had a, a thing on my heel, but that seems to have gotten better. Yeah. Uh, but no, there were some other reasons. I mean, it was last week I went two days. So, you know, but this week I haven't. So maybe I'll, I'll go tomorrow. Well, no, it's going to be seven. It's going to be 17 fucking degrees during the day out there. I don't know about Charlie, but you know it's 58 degrees right now in the Bay Area. Oh, well, good for Bowling you. Creek. Good for you, motherfucker. <laughs> 58. Right. Oh, oh hey, hey, it's 8 degrees here in New York City. Here we go. Minus 16. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that where you are? <laughs> yeah, that, that right now. And when I wake up in the morning, it'll be minus 24. Hey, do you think the shootings are down in Chicago? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you got, Charlie? What do you got, Charlie? 63. 63 <laughs> degrees. Now, you know, in Chicago, it's like minus 60 wind chill or something. Do you think that the murders are down? You know, they're usually having uh, many, many murders every, every day, every weekend. Uh, I wonder if it's so cold there that the murder rate is going to go down for the week. They kill them on the Internet. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Say, if anybody else wants to call, we have some room now because we lost. Uh, we we we've lost oh. Ray. Well, okay. we got his we got his tag. Yeah, well, we have a note from him, uh, yeah. and he'll pro he'll probably be back. You know, it should it should be soon. You know, I mean, I I don't know how he's keeping his wife happy. But uh, well, he's been married for a long time. Maybe he's figured it out. He's got it all figured out. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I got a story here. I got, uh, sometimes I spit out stories into my printer and then I forget to read them to you. You know who Brian Singer is? Uh, is he the guy that's on the uh, getting the Me Too action right now? Well, it isn't Me Too really? He's being sued uh, and uh, being investigated because of parties he held with underage boys. Ah, uh, and uh, and it was so much so that uh, for whatever reason he as a movie director, and he directed a movie that's out right now. But he he got kicked off the movie two weeks before they were through shooting, and somebody else finished shooting it. But because he did primary, um, uh, the primary directing job on the film, uh, he gets credit for being the director on the film. Uh, and Brian Singer uh, directed Bohemian Rhapsody. And it looks now that in spite of his sexual peccadillas that are being revealed, and because of the fact that I think they fired him because he wasn't showing up for work or something like that. Were these accusations or convictions? Well, no, these were uh, these are accusations so far. But it says report notes a singer has been mired in controversy and was fired just two weeks after shooting the production. Remains the credited director uh, on the on Bohemian Rhapsody. The report uh, cites Singer's track records of hit making, including the X Men franchise. And, and he also did uh, one of my favorite films, uh, *Usual Suspects*. If you remember, uh, noting that he uh, reportedly has strong back-end provision in this deal, it says that he was fired for not showing up to set. Dexter Fletcher, who'd been hired to complete the film with producer Graham King and others, uh, but since uh, Singer retained his director's credit, he is likely in line to receive what they call back-end compensation. And so because he is considered the director of the film, this back-end deal will net him $40 million. Now, uh, you said that he was uh, accused of diddling young boys. Isn't that kind of like back-end com compensation? Yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely back-end <laughs> compensation. <laughs> Well, let's oh, okay. let's uh, let's give one to Phil, okay? Um, uh, Singer, meanwhile, signed is signed to direct the female empowering tale Red Sonia for Millennium Films, and in recent weeks has found himself back in the spotlight for alleged sexual misconduct and rape after the Atlantic published his story, including several new accusers. So, there's your story. You know, it just seems that people who are now uh, on the on the blacklist seem to be doing okay. I mean, it was like uh, Bubs was saying 
that uh, uh, Louis C.K. was playing in San Jose and sold out every performance that he was doing. That, you know, that everywhere he goes, he sells out. Why? Because everybody wants to see what Louis C.K. has to say. Uh, and while he says it's ruined his career, he certainly is doing better in the clubs and halls and things like that. And even when he's there, people are outside protesting. People are going in and packing the joint. So Sounds like a Trump rally. It, it does sound like a Trump rally. Well, that's all. That's the only story I have tonight. That's it. You know? Uh, no major stories to, to unfold to people. Um you know who died? Uh, Louisa Moritz. You remember Louisa Moritz? Very sexy woman. She was one, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, and she always she was always playing the sex pot in films. Uh, she died, I think, at sixty two. I can't remember what it was exactly. Well, that's my only other story. So good night, everybody. Good night. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you know Peter McGowan? Where do I know that name? Uh, he was the uh, uh, president or the head of the um, uh, San Francisco Giants, and the president of Safeway stores. No, but but anyway, what? Uh, died yesterday, seventy-seven years old, hmm. uh, battling cancer. Really? Yeah. Really? Wow. And he's the guy that kept the Giants in San Francisco. Gee, I'm just in that. I'm in that age group where uh, I, I, every disease is aiming itself at me. You know, yeah. they're all they're all divvying up to see who's going to get me. And well, I, you've been doing pretty good so far. Well, I don't think hey, it, my mother's ninety. She had she doesn't yeah. even take a pill. She's I know. in perfect condition. Yeah, has all her senses. Yeah, uh, drives. Yeah, she even drives me still crazy. But uh, yeah. you know, I mean, people live. You know, nineties and, and beyond. Uh, if they're healthy, you know, it's a blessing. What, what Charlene? Sorry. Did you just collapse, uh, Charlene? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, uh, well, um, yeah, yeah. Well, the prostate cancer isn't going to get me if I have prostate cancer because you know he can't even feel it or see it. You know, so we're waiting right. to see what what happens. I ignored there. it for a year and a half. Well, you ignored yeah. it, but you knew that you had it. They were. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you knew you had problems. I I don't have problems, you know. And and there's they don't feel it and they don't see it with the scopes or anything like that. So it could be going up for other reasons. My PSA and my free PSA could be low because of other things. He says, "Don't worry about it. Let me worry about it." He says, "Worst comes to worst, we give you the hormones and you'll live to be 95." And I said, "Well, I was planning on 100." You know. But Forget that part of it, you know. I've got that. I've got what you call the turtle, uh, the, or the snail. I think in the Kaminsky method, the snail yeah. form. Slow, the slow gr growing. Yeah. Oh, oh look who's look back! Look who's back! Ray? Is she happy? Or Ray? Is... Did you make her happy? Uh, he couldn't hear uh, us. Uh, did, you, again. did you make her happy, Ray? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What'd you do? Take the garbage out? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, why am I frozen? Yeah, I took the garbage out. I did the deed. I ate some dinner. You did the deed? No, I'm kidding. I didn't. You really didn't? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Well, yeah. you said I'm... I thought that massage it, thing was it, just getting your neck ready said, to have to it, do the deed. Yeah, well, that's how I get, get up for it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You can put it in your lap. <laughs> pretty well. Yeah. You just have to be careful. Yeah. Not to put it on high. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway. Continue. Yeah. We so sit I sit on a washing it, machine. <laughs> well, no. I well, mean, he said he said he was going to make his wife happy. And I figured. No, I just had to go eat dinner. Oh, oh, oh! So you ate dinner, but you didn't want to give up your seat at the table here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, well, I mean, I figured you just could kick me off if it got full. Uh, did yeah, you, I did could you do that. save any dinner for us? Sure. What would you like? Come on what's, over. What's well, you, you, see how, you see how pathetic. We had some like uh, leeks that were freshly picked, and onions oh. and taters, and some uh, chicken sausage from the Costco. Ooh. Alex, how yeah. does uh, that uh, French American chef make a leek salad? Well, what, for, what's her name? First, you take a leek. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was Julia Child. She said, "Julia that, Child, first you take a leak. First you take a leak. <laughs> That's right. And then you cut the leak. Yeah. <laughs> I, I my favorite my favorite body. Julia Child moment was the <laughs> moment that she was stuffing a turkey and somehow her hands were too greasy or whatever, and the turkey got away from her, slid across the counter, and fell on the floor." <laughs> and she simply went over, picked it up, put it back where it was, and just says, it wasn't down there that long, or something like that. <laughs> the five five second rule. And, and went on cooking it. You know. ah, I love it. And she's probably right, because, I mean, if the <clears throat> turkey hits the floor, and let's say, forget the five-minute rule, it's down there for two minutes. What, you know, do you really think you're going to die of some kind of disease because it was on the floor? Alex, you're a television guy. You know that when they do those shows, they got a fully cooked turkey, and then they got the one that she's preparing. That's not the one that they pull out of the oven. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I know that, but I'm, all I'm saying is, if food falls on the floor, I mean, is it suddenly going to... pick gonna, it up and you wash it. it. Or you don't even wash it. Is it, it unless it, it, maybe it fell on a rug and there's a lot of fuzz on it, then you got to want to wash it off, you know. But I've never you know been. Ba There's so much Patrick's bacteria on turkey skin already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, before I got Patrick's next, but uh, uh, you know the thing was uh, they uh, they took a um, um, what do they do? They they were trying to find out about bacteria, and they went into a bathroom, and mm -hmm. they swabbed the toilet seat, right? And then they checked for bacteria, and then they went and just took somebody's average hand who had been using it all day <clears throat> and there was more bacteria on the hand than there was on you the You know where they found seat. even more bacteria was on the hand you know those things you stick your hand into that blow yeah. uh, yes. air yeah. uh, there was more bacteria that. on that than anywhere else in the bathroom Really? Because it yeah. sucks okay. all the air in and all the bacteria comes in with it Okay, right. Patrick's And then it blows out Pat on uh, pa your hand Patrick yeah. has his bacteria laden hand up Go ahead Patrick yeah, I, um, the other the other morning I was taking uh, one of my pills and it fell on the floor in the bathroom. And you know what? For the price that I pay for that fucker, I picked that bitch right up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. But I mean, I I wash my floor all the time anyway with bleach, so I figure. Yeah, I gotta be fine. I, I, the only reason I wiped it off is in case there was some dust that said on the tree. Uh, you know, like, probably some medication. Mm -hmm. I'll eat that bitch if it fell near the toilet. Yeah, Not right. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I, uh, I just paid for Cialis today. I paid $125 for a three month supply. That's 90 pills. So that's a good deal. It, it, oh, it's a very good deal for me. I've got to, yeah. I've got to go get my exception again next, uh, next time. Uh, Isn't there a coupon online for two hundred bucks for Cialis that you can add to your your deal to knock no, it down? No, no, no. Uh, check it out. I think no. there's a coupon. But from I, Cialis, ha I have to go. Bucks. I have to go get that. What do they call the exception, or what is it? Uh, yeah. With your doctor. It, prior authorization. The prior authorization. I never can remember the term. And usually, if your doctor wants it, you get prior authorization, but you just have to go through the process. But it, it's coming up on my Cialis. But anyway, I thought about it. You know, it cost me about $1.25 a day uh, to, to pee okay, you know? so Without side effects. Without side effects, yeah. So, you know. Uh, oh, that's what it's for? Huh. Yeah, you can either that or you can get Flomax. Flomax does the same thing. Oh. You know, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Alex, when you go to the gym, do you have to wipe down the all the equipment you use? I sure. do. I do it. I I bring a towel with me, and then when I'm through, I just simply use the towel uh, to uh, just peripherally do that. It's just a courtesy. You know. Some gyms have disinfected wipes. Well, they do, well, they do. have the disinfectant. They have yeah. the wipes. Uh, but they're too. I have to walk to go get them. So you know. But I mean, I, I like use. It. But I use. I use the towel, and uh, I, you know, I always do it. I think it's the right thing to do. You know, it's just common courtesy. 
I sweat like a pig. I have to wipe it down. Do you sweat like a pig? Well, oh, God. Well, well so, you do. I mean, even the floor has puddles. I have to wipe up the puddles. Yeah, but how long do you do on the on the bike? You do an hour or something? An hour, yeah. Pretty hard. Oof. Oh, fuck He's you. He's still there from uh, yesterday. I only do 20. I'm on the bike right now. I, I do tw- I do 25 minutes, and that's it. You know. Uh, and I'm getting so fucking sick and tired of it, to tell you the damn truth. Yeah. Some of the girls told me you only do about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the Cialis. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Depends on how Cialis many milligrams. Is like four hours. Yeah. yeah. What is with that prior authorization thing? And why don't they just give it to you automatically? You know, you you got it before you get it again. But every year, I got to get a new prior authorization for Cialis. So, you yeah. know, uh, you know, after the prostate surgery, uh, in order to get more blood to the uh, uh, to the uh, the member, uh, they've been prescribing the generic Viagra for me, five milligrams a day, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the, it's only costing me five bucks a month for uh, for for that size pill for a month's wow. supply. Uh, wow. I forgot what the uh, generic name is that they're giving it now, but uh, when I wanted Viagra, they wouldn't give it to me. Now yeah. it's five bucks. I, 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 there's a couple times I paid over 300. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You know, wow. In the, in the day when it worked. Well, I don't know. I, I call my doctor out of this prior authorization stuff, and they just, they just have a form they send. They, they already know how to do it. They, they know all the process to go through. And uh, I've never been turned down for the prior authorization. Do, do you see the light behind uh, Ray's neck? Uh. Ray, take, take me to your leader. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, is that part of the? Uh, the yeah, the it's part of the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like now, a heat what thing. is that? That's a massager. Yeah, it's so great this thing. Yeah. So how's the weather? Where's how's the weather where you are? It, uh, it uh, it's like sixty five and clear and sunny. Fuck all yeah. of you. How much, uh, <laughs> Phil? Same thing with you, Charlie. It's got to be in the sixties, right? Yeah. Uh, Charlene, how how? You're in New Jersey. Huh? I, I was in my car earlier and it was 13. But I think you said, Alex, what is it, 9 now? Uh, right now. I, oh, right now it's 7. I looked at my watch. I looked at my watch. Right, Mickey? It was 7, right? It's 11.46. Good night, pal. <laughs> okay, well. What happened to that global warming? Yeah. Oh, seven was the age oh, of the oh, th- oh, that was the latest thing from Trump. Global yeah. blaming. He said... Uh, where's this global warming they keep talking about? It's and, and somebody, uh, said, I Siberian. think somebody actually had to get on and explain to him that global yeah. warming can cause exactly what's going on <laughs> right now. Yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, We're, oh, three can't. degrees, three degrees in Connecticut. Three degrees. Uh, Patrick's the winner tonight, but you come close. That's exactly what I what I asked. I said, "Where's this fucking global warming that everybody?" Yapping about because he should have fucking here. It's an Al Gore scam. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Uh, global warming is causing well, you don't understand. You don't understand oh, yeah. that global warming can cause it's science. Free, it's too hard. Freezing temperatures. It. it, it I don't any of that bullshit. As soon as you know what, when Wisconsin had fucking palm trees growing, then they would say, you know what, you guys were right. No, men. it has nothing to do with things getting hotter. It's not you guys. Called warming, so... No, it's global warming, but it's warming certain areas that cause the a, a, a effect. Uh, for instance, this, this current cold thing is an effect of global warming. But I can't explain it to you because yeah, I... you guys who say science and all of this stuff, your scientists also said the world was flat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, scientists uh, didn't say that. Well, wait a minute. First of Ancient all, ancient Greeks knew the world. First of all, flat. since we haven't heard much yeah, from them tonight, to hold on a second. So, since we haven't heard from them much tonight, Charlene Jeff, was Jeff, uh, first. Yeah, but let's go to Jeff anyway, and then we'll go to Charlene. Uh, I'm quick anyway. Um, I used to live in Wisconsin, and it used to be 25 below zero, and it sucked, and that's why I left. Yeah, is it still I, used to, below, I used to live. I used colder? to live in Minneapolis, and it was twenty six mm-hmm. below zero, and it sucked. Mm-hmm. Wind like I used to live in New York, and it sucked. 
I yeah. used to live on the top of Mount Everest, and it really freaking sucked. Charlene? <laughs> oh, yes, I was swallowing. It's a polar <laughs> vortex, oh, really? right? <laughs> You're advertising. It's a what? <laughs> Polar vortex. It's a right? polar vortex. That's what yep. it's called, and it's caused by global warming. Hey, yeah, you, you sure. know, if you were just global, swallowing, you, you girls from New Jersey, war. you were making them proud. What? <laughs> she said I was just swallowing. <laughs> so, you know, uh, girls from New Jersey. Snooky, Snooky's having uh, have real happy right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but would she grow an inch? <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, we have a president who's anti-science. He doesn't listen to his uh, his uh, uh, security Generals. people. You know, he because he knows everything. He's smarter than he the thinks, rest of them. He's the smartest guy in the room. I'm he with thinks him. he could throw money at it and go to Mars now instead of having to wait 10 or 12 well, years. Well, Patrick, Patrick, <laughs> you know, I like you a lot. But this blow, global warming thing, you're wrong. You're really wrong. I that, you really told them. <laughs> and I said, as soon as there are palm trees growing out to my front window here, I'll, I would admit to everybody I was wrong. And, and it's recorded, and it'll probably be still recorded somewhere in the future. And I'm saying right now, when there's palm trees growing in Wisconsin again, because remember, climate change has happened since the beginning of the earth. I mean, where I live used to be glaciers, and I'm sure at some point it was tropical. So when that bitch gets tropical again, y'all can say, see, global warming, and I'll say, Rip, I was wrong. You know You're what the, you know the, what the it, when it, Bangladesh, it, people were, there was drought, and there was all sorts of things, a, a sub-Saharan <clears throat> uh, desert, and... Uh, you know, they, they hadn't had rain Phil, in years. Look, wait a minute. People Hold were dying. On and, oh, well, that was when George Harrison did the concert for Bangladesh, right? Probably. That, but, let, you know, I, I mean, these things, that's uh, the way uh, uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Phil, uh, look at the fires we've had. Look at the floods the we've had. No, that the, was caused by uh, PG&E. Uh, yeah, it was caused by PG&E. And some also, guys barbecue in it Windsor. Was, uh, also caused the by... The U.S. military takes climate change very seriously. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, how do they do that, Charles? What? How does it... For one thing, wear a jacket. They, they, they are, they're planning moves of naval bases on the East Coast because those places are going to be underwater in the next 15 years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, the only good thing about global warming is there'll probably be no Miami left. But that's, uh, yeah, that's a personal thing of mine. I hope it wipes out every one of those motherfuckers. What? And I won't be fucking cold. So I've got no problem. Right. I mean, if it's real, warm that bitch up. All, all I know is we've had some very unusual. We've issue. had some very unusual events in the last couple of years. I mean, between the fires and the floods and the and and things like hurricanes. that. Hurricanes. The hurricanes have been much more ferocious because the war water is warm, and it thrives in rhyme in uh, in uh, in warm water. So. And it's Trump's fault. No. No, it's not Trump's oh. fault. It's Trump's stupidity that doesn't realize it's a factor. You know. it's a fa the question is how much are we affecting it and can we slow it down so that we can do things? I mean, that's the major issue. I mean, he wants the to United protect States us. He, he wants to protect us from mythical people, but he doesn't do anything to protect us on the things that are really thre threatening us. And one, yeah. of, one of them happens to be our China. treatment of, uh, of the ecology and, and the world around us. What do you mean, China? Is it, is it us, the United States, uh, that is that is causing this, or is it uh, these uh, emerging countries, as including China, uh, no, emerging industrial countries that uh, are uh, doing unfettered uh, pollution? Oh, quite well, he, uh, au contraire. When it comes to China, they're doing everything to try and stop it because they see it in front yeah. of their very faces. Yeah, they're, they're, they wear masks uh, no, so that they can Phil, walk Phil, outside. Phil, don't make a joke about it. The fact I'm is, not a joke. China, China has is, has been working overtime to get rid of their pollution. 
And it's very difficult because of the massive amount of population and, as you say, the industrialization that's taken place. But they're, work, you know, they're working on it really hard because they know that it can kill their people. Yeah, yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, China is working on it. And part of the reason they have to wear masks in China is not the pollution. It's the sand from the Gobi Desert that gets into the jet stream and then comes over the populated areas. I was there. It sucks. The Gobi Desert is huge, and the sand blows in the air. And you it, walk and it gets, around Chinatown uh, here, and you see all of these Chinese guys no, wearing I'm masks. About in China. They're wearing, I know, they're they're wearing masks, wearing Phil, because when they get a cold, they actually have yeah, consideration other for people other people. From sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know your point. I don't understand. And your when point. you get a cold, you walk around sneezing, and everybody gets your fucking cold because you don't wear a mask. That's true, but I don't get colds. Oh, you don't? No. No. You just get other things. You just get prostate yeah. cancer. I get cancer, <laughs> but no colds. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. Maybe if you had a mask, you wouldn't have cancer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, at least at least I couldn't smell it. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is that 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 um, uh, uh, China is, is to begin with, it, one of the ways they're trying to stop their own personal pollution is they have a very heavy, heavy movement towards alternative forms of power. And and they're going to be probably the world leader in in alternative means of power. Uh, because we have not put an emphasis on it in this country, but they put a priority on it in China. Yeah, because they're stealing our technology. No, no, Phil, Phil, it. Phil, you're always, <laughs> uh, uh, please, we're, uh, we're not, uh, we don't it's need a what about ism right now. That has nothing no, to do. No, but that's what they're doing. No, they're not stealing well, our better. technology it's when it comes to alternative to alternative uh, sources of energy, okay? And they're, they have made it a priority uh, to go to uh, alternative forms of energy within the next 15 to 20 years in China. We aren't yeah. doing that here. Yes, Charlene. Don't they say we have like it's like the consensus now? They think uh, most scientists twelve years, and if we don't do anything, that's by Ocasio. Then, you know, Cortez said twelve right. years. No, she didn't uh, make that up. Yeah, no, that's what she said. Please, well, please, Phil, well, please, Phil, please, Phil. It's it's, it's she, not everyone makes things up. I know uh, some it's, people do. It's AOC now. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick. Now, I've got a serious question about this. I did hear her say that for 12 years. So where did that put Al Gore's prediction? I mean, now we've got contrasting and conflicting predictions on when the world's going to end. I mean, she's saying 12 years. He was saying, you know, by now everything would be melted. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's got the science? I mean, I would say I would say between you and me, Patrick, uh, that Gore's got more of the science. Uh, what Cartez has is a huge set of balls. She didn't and, make that up. And, it's like uh, published. Uh, well, that's, that's, Al Gore that's, said he could name that two in ten years. Uh, there Gore. is a published report that we have twelve years. Yes, there is a published report. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean, mean the world ends in 12 years. No. That means it'll be too late to do anything about That's it. Right. Well, That's right. Well, we don't start it. Yeah. There's some calendar. preacher that said the world was going to end a couple no. of years ago. Oh, you yeah, know, this is ridiculous. That. Do you remember when the ozone it was, had a hole in it? And it, it, got, it was not a political issue. And the whole world got together and fixed the problem. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we just do the same damn thing instead of making this a political issue? It's not a political issue. I the think it still has a hole in it. I mean, yeah, why, do, why do you want to make it a political issue? I mean, uh, I sure don't. It, it Maybe, uh, Patrick, you don't believe in uh, global warming, but why don't we at least investigate it and see if there's something we can do about what we perceive to be global warming? And, I'd rather blame Trump. Huh? How did it I'd rather blame political? Trump. I don't blame Trump. I, no. He's only been there two years. No, it's his fault. I no. blame Trump for those two ugly sons he's got. Those pieces of shit. Yeah, good hair. I mean. yeah, no, no, that's what happens when uh, bad sperm gets into other people's ovums. Anyway, listen, that's it for tonight. <laughs> that's science, by the way. That, that's, <laughs> it, that's it for tonight. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Ray. 
Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Phil. Uh, who else do we have here? Oh, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Uh, do we have anybody else that ditched us? Nah, I can't think of any. Anyway, that's it. Hey, everybody, why don't you wave goodbye to our audience out there, and I'll wave back to you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizens Panel for tonight. Uh, we'll have another one uh, assembled tomorrow night right here at uh, GabNet. Same time. Uh, by the way, uh, tomorrow night, uh, 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin with The Exchange. And then at uh, 10 o'clock, Eastern Time, right here on GabNet. Same time, same station in life. I'll be here, and as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>